Cecily. That's okay. I, I, I always correct me. I'm all about being correct. I work in radio. Everything's phonetic. That's so, sure. <laughs> Welcome to the stage. So we're going to, uh, as, soon as, as soon as our person's ready, we're ready, right, we're ready to go. Okay, so in February of 2004, my father died. Now, I didn't know my father well. He left when I was 21 months old, so I didn't know him. I met him four times my whole adult life. None of the times went well. Our relationship was based primarily on bad forwarded emails, mostly conservative from his part, mostly liberal from mine. Um, so when I got the frantic phone calls from my sisters, my half sisters, telling me he had died, I wasn't like terribly broken up, but I was a little surprised. My father had lived in an area of New Mexico called the Sweetwater Hills, which is east of Albuquerque, down behind the Sandia Mountains. It's not sweet. There's no water, and there are no hills. And he was the volunteer fire chief, and he used to have to drive. This is New Mexico. You don't have fire hydrants in the desert. So they would have to take 5,000-gallon truck, trucks full of water to the fires. And my husband, when he met my father, said, John, what do you do when you run out of water? And my dad lit a cigarette and said, well, Charlie, we watch it burn. <laughs> so imagine my surprise when I found out that it was a fire that killed my father. He was a uh, alcoholic. He smoked. He had emphysema. He lit a cigarette while he was on 100 percent oxygen. COVID. Beautiful alcoholic death. So I was uh, at this point. He had moved from New Mexico to Shreveport, Louisiana, and he'd done that because the lower altitude and the higher humidity was supposed to be better for his lungs. Because you know, quitting smoking was clearly on the question. Um, <laughs> So my husband and I bought plane tickets and went down to the funeral, and this was early February, and we couldn't fly directly to Shreveport because all the flights were booked, and we ended up flying into New Orleans, and you know what happens in New Orleans in early February? It's Mardi Gras. So everybody on the plane was wearing beads and holding up drinks and going, Mardi Gras! And my husband and I were like, you wrong! And, uh, you know, it was awesome because we're also sober, so that was so great. So we got to the hotel, and I went from being, it was just me and my mom growing up, so it's weird having these half-siblings, like three half-siblings. So I went instantly from being an only child to suddenly not only having three half-siblings, two brother-in-law, a brother-in-law, a sister-in-law, and six nieces and nephews, but a stepmother. And my father's second wife, who he married twice, was at the funeral. Unfortunately, also his girlfriend, who was in the house when it burned down, was there. So that was a little awkward. But uh, <laughs> we went to the funeral home. The Shreveport is just awesome. If you've been there, I would still. Oh, anyway, we went to the funeral home, and it was located in a Quonset hut, which is, you know, like a big half barrel building. And it had a banner on the front that said, and I shit you not, dignity doesn't have to be expensive. <laughs> dancing around about who was going to pay the $800 or whatever it cost for the cremation. It was just kind of redundant at that point, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my husband and I ended up paying for most of it, which is ironic since my father had given me nothing except these blue eyes and the big nose. But um, So we drove, we went back to the hotel and got ready for the funeral. We went to the VFW hall where the funeral was going to be held, which was in another Quonset hut. And uh, we're greeted at the door by the resident local veteran who was smoking through his tricky eye. <laughs> and um, I was surprised because my siblings decided, my father was a veteran, so they decided to give me the flag, which was actually kind of, I was really touched and startled by that and actually ended up being more of an emotional experience than I expected. I found out later it was just because they didn't want to have to have a fight between my stepmother and the girlfriend about who was going to get the flag. So, anyway, we went back to my sister's house to round up the night, and everybody began drinking. And it was crazy. I mean, everybody was drinking. And there was a fire. Now, in Shreveport, you can't dig because the pit fills with water. So there was just a fire on the ground, and there were all these people standing around, and they were wearing hunting gear, and I didn't know who they were, and they were telling a joke that was all in the southern accent I couldn't comprehend, but ended with the word, Eagle! And everybody would laugh. And they also used the N-word incessantly, at which I must have flinched. And my sister said, oh, no, we only say that about the African, you know, she didn't say African American, but people that we don't like. Because then it's okay. Yeah. So last thing that happened that was really the nail in the coffin of the night, so to speak, 
was, it was about 9 or 10 o'clock at night, and my husband and I were trying to find an excuse to go back to the hotel, and a sprinkler went off. And I was like, why do you, like, it's not, why would you have a sprinkler go off at 10 o'clock? And my sister says, well, the water table is so high in Shreveport that the septic tanks fill up. So every time you flush a toilet, a sprinkler on your property goes off, spraying filtered septic water. <laughs> and that was my father's funeral. Thank you.